I've, uh, I've waited till the last minute to get started here. Welcome. I am Scott Stimson with International Computer Solutions, and this is the San Carlos Computer Club. We meet each Tuesday at 10 Arizona Sonoran time to discuss te tech topics and to help each other out with troubleshooting and uh, whatever else, just kind of check in with each other. I hope everybody's good out there. Did did anybody bring any topics? Cheryl, do you have a topic today? No, Chester, you got something you need to work on? Something's... Judy's well, got I had something from last month. Okay, well, go ahead. Uh, I think the, the streaming service that has 15,000 channels is called United Network Plus. Network. Yes. I'm just typing it into my note over here. And let's just do a copy. We'll do a search on it real quick. I did mention to Linda too that that you were sorry she wasn't on the call so she could have talked about IPTV. Yeah. I hope she decides that, to join us today. Oh, look at this. It's well, amazing. I don't see her, but. United. And while Network you're typing Plus. that in, did you see that San Carlos has been named uh, a magic city? <laughs> a Puebla Magica? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that is a big deal. Wait, it is. It is. More funding, perhaps. I hope that's the case. I hope, I mean, I, like I think that's nice. Fix the roads and bring us better infrastructure. <laughs> that's what we need. We need more water, better sewer, better roads, more reliable electricity, and more internet. <laughs> that's what we need. The feds have money for that. Let's get it. Video on demand, 15,000 live TV channels, no contract, up to five devices available per an account. And what are you paying for this, Jester? I, don't see I think I have two accounts and paying $29.99 or something like that. Well, and you're, you're satisfied with it? 180,000 series, 40,000 movies. We are your one-stop shop meeting all your entertainment needs. We are a subscription service. Visit unitednet.plus to subscribe. That's interesting. So these things are, the other one, uh, Radiosity <clears throat> is the one that we're so familiar with. But there- well, I really haven't used it yet. I, uh, my grandson set it up on the TV <laughs> with a fire stick and I haven't been able to figure out how to get to it. So uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's, I'm, I'm my main subscription or my main objective was to be able to watch football games in the season. The home page was blank. Here's their channel listings, 40 sports channels, 50 news channels, channels around the world, live TV. And then on demand, 85,000 movies, HD standard edition, and 180,000 series. And that's all on demand. Oh, they even claim to have Netflix movies and TV shows. Boy, she makes you wonder how they're able to do this stuff. Just like uh, Radiosity has looked like they've gone legit. They have they actually worked out some kind of advertising, paying for rights to make this stuff available to you? There was a day and age where stuff like this was pulled right out of the App Store as soon as it was put in. This is available in the U.S. App Store. When, one of the, the heaviest policers of, of stuff like this. So it gives it such an air of legitimacy. But the website is blank. 
Oh, I'll, be, I'll be, able, be able to report later after I figured out how to get it into my, how to get my fire stick working. <laughs> and, and let me say the website is not so much blank as it was blocked by my pop-up blocker. Let's see how the home page looks now that I turned off the pop-up. No, it's still blank. Chester, you say it's on your fire stick? You well, I'm, also... I'm picking it up with the fire stick. Um, and it's a, it's an uh, I'm not quite app. sure how my grandson set that up, but the fire stick is in, but I haven't been able to access it. And it's also got an app for iPad for um, iPhone or in, yeah. And it's now I can pick it up. I can pick it up on my computer without a fire stick. So that's not it's a, a problem. It's a pretty bad rating. Yeah, in fact, it says no URL in app, so I can't watch anything. I paid for the app. I downloaded this app. When you open it, you can't use the service without adding a URL link. Development team should not do this. You, you know, that's a, that's a, um, what it is is the user-friendly stuff. Uh, if you have to add a URL, what that is is to satisfy the App Store requirements, they have pulled a piece out of it that you have to manually add yourself. That's what, what they're talking about, that URL. Uh, probably very similar to the reason that Streamio is able to be in the App Store because nothing that you can tie to that would be questionable is in that version of the app. So that would add to user friendliness. And I, I imagine it's ready to go in the Android store because uh, that hasn't proven to be what Android and Google are all about, whereas Apple has these very rigid terms of service with certain things, as, including copyrighted content, the, avail the ab ability to give people access to copyrighted content. Well, that's very interesting, Chester. Uh, yeah, let us keep us up to date. United Networks Plus, it looks legitimate as far as an app goes. And we wait to hear what uh, Chester has to say about using it for service. Mm -hmm. Where is the pricing? I'm not finding it. You have to go to the website to sign up. I'm sure that's yeah. another another thing with the App Store, because if you were to sign up through the App Store, they would ha probably have to give the App Store 30% of your subscription. Access your account, setup guide, contacts. I don't know about this website, though. I'm not getting anything out of it. Chester, are you okay over there? Yeah, I'm fine. I, That's my I, dog. She that's snores. Your dog, she's snoring. <laughs> <laughs> she weighs about ten pounds, and she really snores. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Quiet area. I don't see the pricing on this. So here's I think it's nineteen ninety nine, twenty ninety nine, and maybe twenty five if you have five yeah. devices hooked to it, something like I, that. I got it right here. I finally found it. I had to go yeah, to the can. client area and then choose the store. Yeah, looks like the max is twenty six bucks a month. That's with five 000. devices. Yeah, fifteen thousand channels over. 85,000 series, movies, TV shows, video on demand. I'm, well, I like have the 1999, but then I have uh, sales tax on top of that. HBO, Stars Plus. Mm -hmm. They've got a 24 hour trial. Well, your dog must be happy. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go mute so you won't have to listen to her. <laughs> you wait, wait till she really gets going. Yeah. <laughs> this is. There is the URL that somebody was complaining that we didn't have. So imagine your URL and your authentication is how you set this up. It's interesting, you know, my folks I know are using Radiosity on a number of different devices, but seldom use it on more than two devices at the same time. I wonder what the limit is, if there is a limit on their account. Well, if anybody finds an about us page, I'd be really curious to know where they are, what they what makes this okay to do. <laughs> They're on Telegram. That makes them feel legit. Their contact us page, join us on Telegram. You know, the, the encrypted instant messenger that's become so popular after WhatsApp was bought by Facebook. It's, it's the one where all the Trump groups ran to after they got banned off of Twitter back in the day. Judy, were you going to add something? I wasn't. I was just going to make a comment that I thought better of. Oh, okay. Well, this is very interesting. I'm very curious about it. I wait to hear Chester's experience. I'm going to put this link under our recommendations. I don't know about recommending something that gets 2.9 uh, stars and it's so difficult to set up. Well, it gets four in the Google store. Yeah, well, that's Google store. Right. Well, that's, that's the not on their web page that people are actually um, coming. The, the icon on my, on my computer is IPTV. Remember, I just mentioned yep, that last yep. week, and you looked that up, and that's a service. Uh, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's a protocol, and, mm. and so it's a combination of things. It's, it's a software client, mm. and it's a service that's being provided, and you marry the two of them together. And so you're, you're being encouraged to download the client and then set it up with the protocol. And, Judy, it is a lousy experience on iOS devices mm. because whatever they're doing, they probably don't satisfy the terms of service without handicapping it, like kneecapping it, before putting it in the iOS store. So it is much more painful for an iOS device simply because they have such rigid terms of service of what's allowed as an app. But that doesn't mean that it's a bad service. That just means it's a bad experience to set up on an iOS device. But also, when you try and access it, you had a lot of trouble accessing their web page. Go hug Mina. Scott. I'm sorry, I was talking to my child. I, I know, I said you had a hard time accessing their surface on their web page. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what that's all about, but if you're going to use this, you're going to have to sign up for it. So you are going to have to use their website. 
I can't tell whether that's me or if it's the website. Now it seems to be working just fine. It might might have been having problems just because I was trying to stream it to you guys while I was using oh, it. Oh, okay. But it, it all seems to be coming up now. Is this the same thing? No, this isn't even the same thing. This is the thing. Okay. Love you too, kiddo. Have fun. <laughs> you gotta go. You gotta Break a go. leg. <laughs> They've got a Roku app. This is the website that you have to go to to buy service. I don't know. I don't know. I'll put it in the document and you guys can can look at it. This is not the right link though. I see Linda's here. She can tell you about IPTV too. You're muted. Hello, Linda. You are muted. We can't hear you. Okay, just pulled in the parking place, brought my husband off. He's getting bariatric treat, uh, hyperbaric treatments. Oh, wow. So every well, we were... day for three hours. Whoa. Okay. Well, we, were, we were missing you yesterday or last week. We were talking about IPTV yeah. and wishing you were online with us. Oh, sorry, but I got this thing and I have to have him here at like 10 to 10, 15. So I kind of, <laughs> it cuts into my driving. <laughs> well, Chester was describing to us a new service he's trying out called uh, United Network Plus. Okay. And uh, we were comparing pricing and uh, features and wondering what your service or the service that you, you've had so much experience with, how it compares to it. Okay, so on my service, if you buy it by yourself and it is Bitcoin, uh, I think it's $100 for the year. But I only year. charge sixty five dollars. So are you year. like a are you like a reseller for it? Yeah. Yeah. Most people don't want to be bothered with Bitcoin. Right. She's also she's it also is kind of a pain. Tech support. tech support too, she is. That's true. Well, there's no tech support but me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> we think you're pretty good. So, huh? We think you're pretty good, though. <laughs> I, so, try, I try to solve the issues. Um, I know one issue that people are having down there that have bought the satellite and kept the mega cable, they really start to conflict with one another. And... Um, the thing with that box, um, Jerry Anderson bought that box you recommended. Yeah, well, for... and it works really good. Mm -hmm. It works really good, but he only has one name for the whole thing, and so he gets confused on which one is on at a. So. He um you're breaking up so we're not he has issues with it. Oh well I don't know what else to do. I'm on my yeah. cell phone. No, ju just repeat what you're saying. Um okay, Jerry, well Jerry Anderson has with you, that little box. Yeah, yeah, the the, the load balancing router, yep. Right. I mean, it's fine, but you know what? He has one name and one thing for his uh, internet, 
and he uses the same name and he gets confused which one he's on. Hmm, I'm not sure what that means. You mean as far as the Wi-Fi goes? He gets confused whether he's on the satellite or he's on the mega cable. Okay. But it, after you're on that box, to... it shouldn't matter, right? Like, like it should be able to change at any moment. Well, it should be. So but... he should... Oh, I remember. He didn't have a main network. And so it seems like we left the TV on the box and then all his, his um, devices, he would just choose one or the other. Right. But he's been having issues. And then when I go to ask him, and it's really not my problem, it's his. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I try to help everybody with whatever problem they're having. But... Um, he can't, he never knows what, what he's on. So it's hard for me to help him. I'm trying to remember what was the name of that service that I was helping somebody with because Instead of a load balancing router, there is a service, there's a VPN service out there that you can subscribe to that will yeah. allow you to bring in multiple internet connections and they'll actually bind them together to give you more bandwidth, which a load balancing router won't. The load balancing router will allow you to go one direction or the other at any given moment. If you run out of bandwidth on one, then it'll move the next connection over to the other connection. So it's moving, it's spreading connections out across, it's spreading connections from your home network across the various internet connections you have. I think the best analogy of this would be if you had a 10 megabit connection from Telmex and a 10 megabit connection from Mega Cable, you could never go faster than 10 megabits on a load balancing router. You have more 10 megabits available, but your max is 10 megabits, if you follow what I mean. And there was a yes. service that I got to use with a customer there in San Carlos right before I left, and I'm forgetting the name of it. But what it would do is it was a VPN provider so you'd pay a subscription fee. They would provide you with one IP. They have client software you run in your computer, and it takes all of your internet connections and combines it into one internet connection. They, and they're able to do this because it's a VPN. They're able to give you one IP address for all the traffic that's coming down your connections. And uh, something like that might prove to be a solution in his case. It would be more uh -huh. confusing to ask for help, but it would be a more reliable way of getting internet given any circumstance. One connection goes down, you're on the other connection. A crappy connection would just add to whatever you can suck out of the crappy connection would just add to the overall bandwidth. So you're not flipping between connections. You're always using the same connection, but it comes down different sources, if that makes sense. And for the life of me, I'm not uh -huh. remembering the name of it. I thought it was called well, Finding. The reason he's keeping Mega Cable is because of his security. Yeah. In the house. So that's a problem. If you give up mega cable, you're not going to have any issues. But the satellite isn't always reliable because I've been on there with him when the satellite was actually down. Yeah, no, I actually have tested satellite, not with him, but with uh, another customer. And I've watched the satellite bounce up and down all the way down to 10, all the way up to 90, maybe 100. 
but uh, I've seen the satellite connection in the Caracal be very, very um, up and down. Uh huh. Okay. See, so that's his for... issue. Yeah. Well, I wish I, I was hoping I could mention this particular thing by name again, because we had talked about it for a while in club a few weeks before I left. For the life of me, I cannot remember what it's called. I'm going to have to go back and look at our notes from weeks ago. Uh-huh. Because I was an expert in it for a week there, and now I don't even remember what it's called. <laughs> But if you're if if you're you don't mind that extra expense of this particular VPN service, that may end up being uh, a solution. Outside, you don't need the ro load balancing router. What you need is a computer with multiple interfaces on it. So, like just uh -huh. like maybe you would have two or three Ethernet connections. Or you have an Ethernet connection, a USB connection to an ISP, and a wireless connection to an ISP. And then that does Apple do that? Uh, well, yeah, you can do that with any of the computers. But what happens is the computer, if you want to shoot that through your network, the computer that does that ends up being the router for your network. It becomes your internet source. Oh. So, like, for Apple to do it, you'd have to add a couple of USB to Ethernet connections so that you could plug it into your network. And what this other customer Don't did Don't tell is, him that. Yeah. <laughs> the, what, this, what this other customer did is they bought a um, single-purpose Linux computer and made that the router for his network. And then that single-purpose Linux, Linux computer actually came with like four Ethernet connections on it. And so each Ethernet connection would go to an Internet source, and then one would be an out to the network. It's a, it's a slightly complicated build, but it's very promising as far as being able to bind together the bandwidth. And in, in this analogy, if you had 10 megabits from Mega Cable and 10 megabits from Telmex, with this software, with this service, then you can literally combine that and use it as though it was a, a maximum of 20 megabits. Slightly different than the load balancing router, which Jerry's using, I think, just on his TV. I think that's what's going on over at his place, Linda. When I left him, I think the load balancing router was providing TV service, and then uh -huh. both... He had the wireless. Um, he had the wireless mega cable and the wireless Starlink available to him. Right. He was moving back and forth between those two on his devices, wirelessly. Well, see, what he's trying to do is he goes over to that lake. Oh, and he wants to. So bring they have the... they have trailers over at the lake. There's about four of them, I think, they have trailers over at the lake. And so they want to take the, so that's why he bought the, uh, the yeah. RV model so that they could pick them up and take them over. And then he wanted to leave the mega cable for his wife when he was over there because the girls usually don't go over there with him. So I, I so think that's, that was she, the... He wanted her to be able to watch TV. I, I think that's the way we had left it, was that he could just unplug the satellite and nothing would have to right. change as far as the TV. Yeah. And and I don't think that's changing, but I think the satellite is going down and then he's thinking he's getting himself all confused. Yeah, I did not test satellite connections at his place. I mean, any more than just a cursory test. But when I was working with this yeah. other customer, on the same side of the Caracal as Jerry, but, but farther away, farther towards the ocean, uh -huh. but on that same side of the Caracal, uh -huh. this customer had issues with Starlink. 
it it was uh-huh. going up and down, up and down while we were doing. It was actually it was the least reliable connection he had. He had a connection with with uh, Telcel. He had a cell phone connection that that uh, maximum of ten megabits a second connection. He had that. It was very stable and reliable. He had um, he he had uh, fiber optics from Telmex, which was very stable and reliable, at least at the times we were testing it. But it was the Starlink that we watched as the speeds would go up and down when we were testing it. I wonder if it doesn't, he wasn't, I wonder if Jerry's not suffering from the same problem as this other Caracol person. Maybe it's literally a line of sight issue. Well, is that other person near Jerry? That's what I'm saying is they're on the same side as the Caracol. I, on the same face of the caracal, they're farther away. One's okay. one's closer to the ocean, the other one's closer to the Bahia. Oh, okay. I see where you're talking. They are. Yeah. So are they're, they on the opposite side? They're on. Yeah, they're on. Both of them, aren't they? On the opposite side of how you come up the caracal? No, he's on the uh, yeah. caracal. And then you make a right turn at the little, and then you go around and then you go down that little hill and he faces the the outgoing water, not over at the Bahia. That's right. So you turn left to find Jerry. Yeah. Right. You go over and you turn left. Actually, they're closer together than I was, than I was thinking. They're probably, geez, they're probably like six houses away from each other. Uh Uh-huh. Now that now that I'm taking the mental journey across the the caracal, <laughs> uh huh. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they're suffering from the same problem. Maybe it is a line of sight issue. It could be. It could be. So and it, it it's I, supposed I, it's supposed to automatically switch, right? Uh, well, in those cases, it, one of the things that's very frustrating about the load balancing router is it doesn't work very well if your internet is having crappy experience. Like if it's up and down, it, the load balancing uh-huh. router works better if it just completely fails than if it's just kind of failing. So I think your theory about problems uh-huh. with the satellite connection could be valid. The what I've found in my experience with the load balancing router is, like I said, it spreads your local area and network connections. Like what I'm doing, what my wife's doing, what my, my daughters are doing, gets spread across our internet connections. Each one of us is limited to how much speed that internet connection can do. I, but, but if one is congested, then it instantly just moves put somebody on another internet connection. Hey, I'm, I'm trying to generalize. Well, this. I, I think part sense. of the problem is, yes, but I think part of the problem is in, in Mexico, you don't have enough megabits. I mean, you figure well, like up here, okay, I'm on Cox. I'm getting close to 200 megabits. We've got over 500 so, here at the bed and breakfast. Up there. Yeah. So you but, don't have that issue up there. But right? you still you still have have lag issues. But what I'm talking about with uh-huh. Jerry and the load balancing router is that you're trying to take advantage of more than one internet connection. If one of the internet connections is crappy, then it throws the it throws the whole thing off balance. Because uh-huh. one moment it thinks it has plenty of internet, the next moment it, it it doesn't, and so it's it's put a connection over on the crappy connection, thinking that it's going to be a. It asks for 40 megabits a second. You're going to watch a 4K Netflix video, and it goes, "All right, I got 40 over here," and it starts downloading across that connection, and then all of a sudden that connection hiccups. Arr, 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 arr. And you're having this horrible experience because things are buffering. It's not coming down to you fast enough. And you would hope what it would do is it would move to a better connection. But because that connection didn't fail completely, it takes a long time for it to make for the load balancing router 
to make the determination that you need to be moved over to the other connection. It would have been better for that connection to just fail in, in its entirety. The load balancing router is a great way to take, take advantage of multiple internet connections, but they have to be stable. When they're unstable, the, the connection becomes unpredictable across the load balancing router. And that's where something like this service that I'm describing that for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of it at the moment, would be advantageous because it's constantly um, sending each packet down one of those those connections you're you're maintaining. And it's able to do that because you ru you run, you maintain a VPN with the service. So the service becomes aware of your satellite connection, your cell phone connection, or, or your cell network connection, your, um, your DSL or your fiber optic connection. It becomes aware of all those different connections to the wide area network, to the internet. And then at any moment, it will choose one over the other to deliver the packet of information. And it will be based on availability. And by doing so, it has, it has been able to amplify your, your single internet connection as a single internet connection by adding all those bandwidths together. Okay. All right. Um, I have to go. Okay, Linda. Nice talking to you. We didn't get too Thanks. deep into IPTV, but maybe maybe there's some ideas in there that will help Jerry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We'll see you later. You're welcome. Does anybody else have any topics they would like to bring to this meeting? I I I've got one here <clears throat> that I meant to mention last. <clears throat> pardon me. Last week. Uh, just a quick thing, uh, if you have tel cell service, uh, you do yourself a favor, get in the My Tel Cell app. Uh, this last month was the first time I successfully paid my daughter's saldo from my app. I was I keep the app on my phone to pay my contracted Tel Cell, but my wife and daughters have prepaid uh, Tel Cell phones and from the my telcel app i am able to pay their prepays with my credit card so they don't have to go into oxo to to buy time on their phone i can just go pay for it with my my cell phone tell the my telcel app i haven't done this yet but it'll also allow you to pay your telmex uh uh, phone bill, your landline phone bill, and you can keep your credit card in your Telcel, my Telcel app, and use it for these different kinds of purchases. So it's just a quick one-off. I just wanted to recommend if you've got Telcel service, if uh, or Telmax service, you might want the Telcel, my Telcel app. And I'm only thinking about it because it recently updated to a much more reliable application to use. It, it was a little iffy for a little bit there. I'm like, really? I'm going to pay for something through this? And uh, it's become very stable. So it's been it's been a real help for us being here in Alaska. And I have the My Telmex, Telmex app. There's a Telmex, My Telmex app. Yes. And I, I have used that. that. I have that. I also pay my bill, though, with my U.S. credit card through the Me Telmex USA site. Oh, from the USA site. Yes, I don't so, know if you can pay tell sell that way, but I that's how I pay um, my Telmex bill. Interesting. Yeah. And if they, you pay over a hundred dollars U.S. at a time, they hold that credit for you, and you don't get charged the service fee for using a credit card. Oh, neat. Yeah. So anyway, I, just to add that. Uh, the Telcel, Me Telcel is the name of the app, Me Telcel. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I don't believe that they charge you a credit card fee for using a credit card. 
because hmm. I haven't I haven't seen that in my statement. Again, I'm just are, paying Telcel. But are you using a Mexican credit card? No, I'm using a U.S. credit card. I don't have a Mexican credit card. Well, so me Telmex does charge you. Does charge you a, a credit card fee if you don't you put a hundred dollars or more onto your account. Or, well, that's interesting, and I wonder if because I've never paid my Telmex bill with me tell sell, but I know it's capable of doing it. I wonder mm -hmm. if they would charge a car credit card fee if I did it through me tell sell. I if, don't know. That's if, interesting. Yeah. If not, that might be a hack to get around it. Exactly. Actually, I just wait until I'm about out of money on my Telmex bill and then I put a hundred dollars <laughs> US on it. So, you know, what's <laughs> nice about doing it like that, Judy, is I, you remember back in the day, people would do that at the office and then they mm -hmm. discovered it wasn't being accounted for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> at least this way it's accounted for in the system you have access to. And you actually get a receipt and then my Telmex bill shows me how much credit I have. That's really good to know. It is. I'm just making a quick note. Well, very cool. I have included three news articles. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at them. I just thought that they would they were kind of interesting. Uh, the first one I started with here is Amazon's, uh, oh, is this going to come up? Yeah, Amazon's lawsuit. This is what I want to see. Where is it? There we go. So there is an FTC lawsuit against Amazon. And uh, the details have come out. And they are outlining specifically the experience that I think all of us have had, where there's a moment you need to get a hold of Amazon customer support, and the button's not there. The button's been there. Well, I have their phone number programmed into my phone. Why do you need a button? Well, what, what we're talking about is a, an internal policy in which I, they are nudging you away from getting quick help. Well, so when, but if you have their phone number, uh, they have that option that they'll call you back when someone's available or you can stay on hold. I, I understand that, Judy. What we're talking about okay. here is a way in which a website is being designed so that so that you are getting nudged in different different directions depending on the product, depending on their relationship with the the seller. And so their relationship with you changes and it changes by what kind of options they're giving you. And so if you've ever felt like, why can't I find that option that was here the last time I bought something? This is the reason because every situation is algorithmically detailed differently. Chester, go ahead. What, what do you? Yeah, the, the, uh, my understanding of the lawsuit that uh, Amazon is faced with has to do with their Prime account. Absolutely. And the fact that they made it almost impossible to cancel your Prime account. Yes, absolutely. This is, I mean, th that is very specifically what it's about, is not being able to cancel Prime. Very similar to the issues that we've had with cable companies in the past, where it was so difficult to get out of your, your, um, your, um, your cable bill. In fact, you still experience that when you call and try and get, get out of Prime. And the way they've been doing it is through these manipulative tricks, these, these different ways of changing the button, changing the, the, uh, the options that are available to you. And that's, that's what's so interesting about it. the lawsuit. You're absolutely right. The lawsuit is about getting out of Prime membership. The details are what are so interesting what, that have just been disclosed. Yeah, Bill, what would you like to add? Well, one time I've had that same problem. We're right close to the end of the subscription. So I just deleted the credit card. They couldn't uh, renew it. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, there you go. I've done that also when I'm not sure that you've gone through their their system to try to get it, they cancel and you're not sure you've done it. 
cancel your credit card, take it off. And then they, you know, they can't do anything. You can, also do, you can also do oh. that with PayPal, except that PayPal makes it very difficult to get to the, to the uh, company you're trying to discontinue automatic payments. You know, and I don't know if it would make it make a difference in in your behavior, but is it is it possible that that could affect your credit rating? Hmm. I I don't think so. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just that your credit card isn't. You're not defaulting on anything. It's your credit card isn't uh, working anymore, and they send you notices. Hey, hey, in order to continue your membership, you have to update your credit card information. It's the same as not updating, you know, you just don't, you just let it yeah. lapse. I can definitely see it like that. I'm just curious if, if there is like at some point a terms of service that, that you have violated by not keeping your credit card up to date and that could be grounds to, to mark your credit rating. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm not talking as knowledge in this area, but it seems like that would be a natural progression uh, if this became a technique for getting out of these reoccurring subscription fees, you just well, I think one of the things is when you sign up for those subscriptions, they give you like 90 days free or the, the first 30 days or whatever, and you have to give them a credit card information to get the free trial. If you try to cancel that trial, uh, they do. They make it harder for you to cancel it before they've charged you anything. So, and, and your question about the credit rating, I, you, did you specifically mean through PayPal? No, no, I meant just the idea that you would be using a service, and it doesn't have to be Amazon. I'm thinking of any service out there that, that you have to agreed this. to a terms of service, that you are a member of this, and you are paying a reoccurring subscription fee, and you have... You have you have pulled your credit card out of that so that they can't charge you, and they 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 go through all the niceties and all that, but you blatantly are just like, no, I'm done with it. I don't want this service anymore, and you won't cancel it. So I'm can I'm taking my credit card out. If they have legally the ability to put a black mark on your credit score for that. I, I just wonder if, if something like that is possible. I have no idea. I have no background in this. But Bill's solution sounds like a real valid solution. It's so valid that in the past that we've had um, banks and services like PayPal that, uh, in, well, in fact, PayPal did it for a while. I don't know if they still do it. Generating, they, they gin up credit card numbers when you need them. And My then, bank stopped doing that. My yep. credit card, which was a real bummer because I use that all the time because that way when the expiration date, you can, you could have, you can set an expiration date to happen in three months. But my, my credit, one credit card that did that doesn't do that anymore. Well, and I wonder if you did that, like if you signed the prime membership agreement, I haven't read mm -hmm. the whole thing because nobody reads the whole thing. But if, if in there somewhere you have a, there's a good faith argument that you will continue payments on this service. Until canceled. Until canceled, that's right. And pulling your credit card out isn't canceling, that's, that's denying payment. A, and so those could be looked at differently. I mean, you're just following my thought process. I have no, I, I, I gotta qualify this. I have no information in this area. I'm not giving advice. I am exploring with curiosity this concept of denying them payment and how it might affect you, how it might come back and, and affect you in the long run. That's I also, a good yeah, and I also don't believe we live in a day and age where I'm worried about my credit rating anymore. <laughs> I personally, I'm not concerned about what the credit rating thinks of me. I've worked out all my options, I'm fine. <laughs> I'd be more concerned about um, who has access to and and uh, how many things are on there as as opposed to um, what it is, <laughs> what my credit rating is. Yeah. It would be more, you know, how many people have access to it, what companies are looking at it and that kind of thing. Well, yeah, and we've definitely spent a lot of time thinking about that stuff because of the 
the hacks that disclose stuff from like uh, Equifax and 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 I mean that, that was one of the biggest hacks in history was the amount of personal information they got out of there, your your credit rating, and with that information, um, they you remember they gave a, Equifax's solution was to give you I don't know like three years of identity theft protection because that's that's the concern. The concern is they have. They, they have your identity information so they can take out credit in your name. And that can affect your, your credit rating, right? Because of identity theft. And one of the solutions that went around the internet was locking these credit, credit agencies from providing information. So if, if you have your credit rating locked, which legally you're supposed to be able to do now without it being too, you can approach each one of these credit agencies. Linda, I'm sorry. I know you got your hand up and you're going to talk right after me, but I'm going to mute you because there's a lot of background information noise coming through. But we, you, you are next. The, uh, you are able to lock your, pre your credit so that people can't get into it. So that, so that um, no one can try and use your identity to take out credit. All of a sudden, you're getting contacted by a new credit card company that can't check your credit rating or a car, a car loan company that's trying to offer you a loan, but they can't check your credit. And you're finding out that somebody is trying to take money out, trying to take credit out in your name at that moment because you have locked your ability to report credit, which you're able to do, which legally you can go to these agents, Equifax, you can go and say, lock my credit. And what that means is nobody can check your credit rating until you unlock it. Yes, Linda, what did you want to add? And you're going to have to unmute yourself because I can't unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Wow. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So that's a situation I had. Somebody tried to get a mortgage off my credit. Okay. Well, so yeah. I called and asked what to do. And um, I just sent letters to all three credit agencies and I froze it. And I keep it froze. And, and then you can just go right online and you can unfreeze it if you need to use it. But if you keep it froze, then people can't be looking up your stuff either. Yes, and especially with with my age and elder, yeah. how often are you looking yeah. for credit anymore? Case. I mean, how often are you trying to sign up for a new credit card or oh, sure. trying to oh, get a loan on a car or a house? Those, those are young people right. things. Thank you. And so keeping it frozen is really a realistic solution mm -hmm. to that kind of problem, that kind of identity theft. You can unfreeze it when you when you're doing that that one thing, right. and then you refreeze it after you've been you've been uh, approved. Right. Well, we've got four minutes left in this meeting. Should we go on over to the next meeting? I'll open it up now. If you guys feel like we've got more meeting in us, I'll just we can make wander our way over to the other code. I'm going to bring that up right now. So anybody that's ready to move over to the other code, I should be in it now. Jim's coming in. As soon as you're in, start trying to talk to me because I don't know if I can hear anybody. Jim, say something. No, nope, that's what I thought. I'm, I'm missing audio right now. I'm going to have to get out and get back in. I really don't know what that kind of problem is. Anybody that's been listening to me talk, just... I, I have to, I'm letting everybody in and then I'm going to let myself out and come back in to see if I can get the audio back because I can't hear anybody talking. So I'm killing the other meeting now.
Yeah, I can't hear you, Judy. Everybody can hear Judy except for me. I need to get out and get back in. Wasn't, All right. I, I can hear you. Can now. you hear me now? One of the ads that one of the <laughs> telephone companies used to have. Yes, it was. Yeah, it seems like that was a Verizon ad, if I remember right. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Everybody's here. Are we missing anybody? Actually, a very clever ad. We all talk about it years later. Right. We still laugh about it every time we find ourselves in that situation. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> We're missing Bill and Cheryl. We are, aren't they? Yes. If we want to, if we're ready to go to recommendations, I just started the new series. Sure. Why don't we start wandering that way? We're almost to the end of an hour. I did, I, well, I did include a couple other articles that I recommend you guys check out because they're really cool. One of, one of them is about cooling gadgets using vibrating a uh, membrane. So the, there would be fanless technology. This is this is really cool stuff. They've been talking about this for a while, but this will make our equipment cooler and smaller and more powerful. They even have a prototype here. They're called air jets, and they apparently vibrate. So they're a membrane that vibrates, that creates an airflow. So you're still blowing air to cool things down. But it's not a, I'm, I'm doing all these hand gestures and realizing that nobody can see me. It's, it's vibrating to create air instead of spinning like a fan would. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw these out here. You guys have access to the documents so you can read it for yourself. This, oh, here, this is really cool visual. That's the device creating a flow of air. I hope you guys can see that. It's, it's spinning like a, like a pinwheel off of the air of this solid state device. Oh, that's wild. It's from what I gather, the vibration that's happening, I think is imperceivable to the naked eye. but it's definitely creating a flow, an airflow, and it's solid state. This is, that's, that's the device right there. An air jet mini that's called. But it's gonna allow us to put an amazing amount of power in a really small package. You know, thermals are always what determines how much power you can use out of these chips. And the way we um, balance thermals that determines how the performance of your computer, you can see in this guy's hand, they're showing a little micro ATX case. Very difficult to get a fan in there to cool it down. So traditionally what would happen is it would just slow down. They would just slow it down until it started cooling off. So you'd be able to run things at a really fast speed, and then you'd have to, it would, it would throttle itself. All of a sudden, your performance would, would dip because it needed to stop going so fast so it would slow down before it would burn up. Yeah, his pills are up there. Did you remember that? Uh, I haven't been up yet, no. How did you remember yesterday? Yeah, every time I go up, I do. Okay. And if you got I a filter. Out of here, just Didn't Judy have a recommendation on a cereal? Yeah, yeah. Well, the other, uh, we're, we're going to do that. I just wanted to say one other thing. There's another article here I find very interesting. It is uh, left-leaning because it's from EcoWatch. But they are claiming that the first five months of the year, electricity was generated by solar and wind than from coal. That's an interesting accomplishment. 
So if you have any do interest, that, do you think that's because they're closing so many coal fired plants? Well, it, it could mm -hmm. be, but uh, they have to replace it with solar and wind, right? No, they actually replaced one of the plants that they just closed in Colorado Springs. They put in six gas generators of some kind, but they shut down the coal plant that was, they spent billions on making it environmentally compliant, and then they closed it down because it's clean, prime clean real coal. estate. Clean coal? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. I mean, it was it's prime real estate in Colorado Springs. Well, so. I do. I mean, as much as I like this as a milestone, I do think you have to take it with a grain of salt because it is eco wash, mm -hmm. and so they want they want to write news that is solar and wind friendly and positive in that respect. So it could very. I wouldn't put it past that being one of the reasons. We do have an increase in wind and solar. But we definitely have a drop in coal. And uh, you could be right. The, it could be that what we're looking at is a drop in coal because we've got an increase in gas. And so compared to compared to solar and wind, yeah, it is generating more than coal. Chester, what would you like to add? Yeah, interestingly, and, and Judy is correct, there have been a lot of shutdowns and coal-fired plants in the United States and there will be more. But on the other hand, the price of coal is going through the roof because countries like China are buying the coal. That's interesting. Yeah, because China's still using coal. Not only China, but other southeastern uh, uh, countries are buying coal as well, including Europe. Of course, Europe has a lot of coal, but... Uh, uh, the price of it has done very well. Well, this this article also reports that there is 1,350 gigawatts of capacity from 10,000 different projects. These would be wind and, and solar projects waiting to be connected to the grid. And so, that's no easy task. Yeah. Yeah, we are definitely in a transitional time period, aren't we? It'll be interesting. Our grand, my grandchildren will have an interesting future. It will look completely different in this respect. Well, we have exhausted the news articles I thought you would find interesting. And at this time, we typically do recommendations. And Judy mentioned that there was a show that she wanted to share with us. Go ahead, Judy. Uh, this is on Netflix. And it's called The Diplomat. Ah, okay. You have a synopsis. This is on. Prime, um, right? No, Netflix. Netflix. Okay. Uh, it's about a um, CIA former CIA agent that becomes an uh, ambassador. Oh, okay. Having, having espionage insight while doing diplomacy. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds interesting. I've seen it, the commercials for it. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I have on this list a, um, uh, a mini series, The Days, which goes into the Fukushima crisis. It's also on Netflix, just recently released. It's called The Days, and it's a Japanese miniseries on what happened when the uh, tsunami hit the power plant and all the things that were involved in trying to make it safe. And I, I watched it, and it just felt so similar to the Chernobyl miniseries. I, it was amazing to compare and contrast the kinds of decision making that was having to be made uh, because they were trying to address the same problems and they were dealing with the same lack of solutions, though we we're talking about 30 years in between inst instances. Uh, it there's was very also an there's an Alaskan series that we enjoyed. 
and I can't quite remember the name of it, but I'll give you the idea. And it was the Alaskan News or the Alaskan newspaper or uh, oh, something. Oh, that, the Daily, the, the Alaskan the Daily. Alaska Daily. Yeah, that's a great show. It's a good show. It is probably one of the more accurate portrayals of Alaskan life out of all the Alaskan shows that have showed up. <laughs> it's probably one of the more accurate. There's only one series that was the problem in one year. I hope it continues. It's only the first yeah. season. Yeah. Who is, is that Hillary Duff? Is that her name? Hillary Swank. Hillary, Hillary Swank? No, Hillary Who Swank. Is, yeah, that's who it is. Hillary Swank. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, we've enjoyed it. I haven't finished it yet. I think I've got one or two episodes left, but we really enjoyed it. Well, maybe it's going to continue because she had a baby, you know. Oh, really? In real life. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, in the series, she doesn't just have much recently. prospects. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I think it's excellent. Yeah, I agree. I think it's I mean, when they got that guy stuff. off from that they wanted to... Yeah, when they got that guy off that they wanted to convict, I thought that was excellent. And I couldn't find it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is that series? I think that it is. Is it a Hulu series? Copy. Let's let's find out. Let's use Just Watch. Just Watch. You're going to a website called Just Watch. Yeah, I use it all the time to see where things are being streamed. Here, I'll, let me switch over to it. Alaska Daily. Oh. It's on Hulu, Apple TV, and Disney Bundle. Fubal in the United States, ABC, DirecTV, Spectrum. Oh. You can buy it on Amazon. It's on Hulu. Google Play. Yeah, it's on Hulu. It's a Hulu show. It is. Oh, but if you've got an ABC subscription, you can watch it for free. And if you've got a Spectrum subscription, you can watch it for free. Is it available in Canada? Isn't Hulu owned by Disney? Yep. Well, for the most part, I think there's still another another stake in it, but uh, I think they're uh, Disney has pretty much taken it over. They're the majority stake in in Hulu. Uh, in Canada, you can't watch it. <laughs> Not for free. You can watch it on Apple TV or Google Play in Canada. Oh, Linda, I'm sorry, you're bleeding through. And and Netflix does not have Alaska Daily. No, it doesn't. No. No, it's a Hulu thing. It's completely different. ABC, Hulu, um, DirecTV. In Mexico, it's Star Plus. That's because Hulu's not available outside the United States, and Star Plus is Disney's version of Hulu internationally. Anyway, yeah. Good show. And Just Watch is the website that answer. You can download a Just Watch app for your for your mobile device if you if you get into this. I've used Just Watch for a few years now because I can just quickly search for something and uh, find out where it's playing. Uh, 
I obviously have some cookie saying it should be in Spanish. We were talking last week about the one about the Cheetos. What's its name? Um, yeah, uh, Flaming Hot. Yes, I was actually on uh, Linda's service and I could get it. I wasn't ready to watch it, but I could get it. Oh, and it's it such a funny show. Didn't block, block me. Funny, funny movie. Uh, if you have access to Hulu, it's on Hulu now. So if you have if you have Disney Plus. You, you've got access to it. If you have Hulu, you have access to it. What's the storyline? It, it is, uh, it's the dramatization. Flaming Hot Cheetos. <laughs> it's the dramatization of a Latino that started as a janitor and came up with the Flaming Hot Swirly, or a, uh, sw what's it called? Cheeto? No, no, no. The Cheeto. flaming hot, the the spice mix. Um, oh. Um, swirly, swir, swirly, swirly. It's the same language they use for construction too. When they when they mix it all together. He, slurry, he, slurry, slurry. Thank you, slurry. It's the flaming hot slurry. Him and his wife and family came up with that flavor that flavor palette and sold it as an idea to um, um, Cheetos, so free free to lay at a time when free to lay sales were slumping and they were having to do cuts across the company he comes up with this idea to market their products with a flavor towards Latinos one of the largest growing sections market in in the United States. And so it's his story of success from poverty all the way up to being a uh, executive in Frito-Lay. It's and it's a comedy. It's a real fun mo movie. We really enjoyed it. It had a lot of a lot of um Latino Mexican points in it just of culture that my daughter and I could really relate to when we were watching it. We were just laughing out loud throughout the movie. I'm going to put that on here too. Flaming Hot Cheetos. You can get Flaming Hot Everything now. It's become one of the biggest um, profit drivers in Frito-Lay is the licensing of Flaming Hot. You get Flaming Hot Beef Jerky. Well, does anyone else have anything they'd like to offer up for today's meeting? We have gone through a number of topics. Have not solved anybody's problems. Anybody got a problem out there besides Jerry Anderson? <laughs> no? Well, if you do have a problem out there, you can always get a hold of me. I'd be happy to help you, help you remotely. That's what I do. I do IT work from my desk. We'll see you later, Judy. See you, Linda. See you, Jim. I see Chester's already left. Until next Tuesday, everyone, tech on. We'll be back here. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, Jim. Thanks for being here. This has been the San Carlos Computer Club. I am Scott Stimson from International Computer Solutions. There's my info there. If you're looking for solutions, uh, I can bring them to you, probably remotely. Just get a hold of me, scott at internationalcs.net. And if you like our club, you like what we're doing, you can check us out. Our website is mostly a feed for these YouTube videos, but you can check it out. That's where we post stuff, um, sccclub.org. We also have a Twitter account. Occasionally, we post things there. So you can, you can look there, at least for announcements and a Facebook page.
where with uh, the way Twitter has done things, uh, announcements don't go out there automatically any longer. But they are going to Facebook, and I have a Tumblr feed now, and they're automatically posting there using the WordPress of our site. So go to sccclub.org, and uh, you can subscribe to any of those things, YouTube, Tumblr, uh, Facebook to uh, get announcements on what's happening in the club. Everyone is welcome. If you need an invite, get a hold of me, and I'll send you an invite on the day that we have club. Uh, until next Tuesday, it's always great to be out there with you guys in Internet land. Tech on.